sponsored by Squarespace. There's a genre concept in East Asia called fairy tales for grown-ups. These are works of fiction that explore complex topics such as war, of domestic violence, through fairy tale conventions and childlike perspectives, contrasting harsh reality against precious innocence. Today's story is a beloved example in this genre. Created by writer Brian Sey and illustrator Alex Mack, Magdal is a slow-witted piglet, ordinary in every way. In fact, Magdal was originally just a side character in a comic strip. He is just another kid. Yet this earnestness is exactly what resonated with the audience. His popularity grew, outshining everyone, eventually becoming the face of Hong Kong animation. He's been in comic books, TV shows, commercials, even a YouTube channel, and of course, a series of feature films. My Life as Magdal, released in 2001, was the first and arguably the most iconic film of the series. In this comedy anthology, a faceless adult Magdal shares memories from his childhood around the 2000s. Some gags, some heartfelt stories, some melancholic contemplations, but mostly, it's about how Magdal remembers his mother, Mrs. Mark and how she navigated through life in the beautiful but overwhelming city of Hong Kong. What do these stories mean? Why is this film so important to Hong Kongers? Today, let's take a look at this beloved film and explore the melancholic details hidden beneath this innocent facade. Let's start at the beginning of the movie. It was 1995. Mrs. Mark was about to give birth. In her delirium, she was visited by a floating plastic tub. Believing it to be a religious miracle, Mrs. Mark prayed to it, wishing his son can have good grades, good looks, or good fortune. She then names her son after the visiting object, which in Cantonese pronounced Tao. Holy Vision is a common story trope. Mother Mary, for example, was visited by an angel and later three wise men. It usually denotes the birth of a great man or woman. But Magdal isn't destined for greatness, and so Mrs. Mark was visited by an ordinary household object. It's a funny gag, but the choice of plastic basin isn't entirely random. In Hong Kong, this round basin with a curved rim is long been associated with the working class. The versatility, practicality, and durability reflect the owner's quality, hardworking people with honorable professions. The plastic variant, of course, didn't get popular until industrialization, when mass production became possible. It's cheaper, it looks uglier, it's more perishable. Such is the perception of hard labor in a post-industrial Hong Kong. Later in the film, we learn how hardworking Mrs. Mark is, there's a whole song and dance about it, actually. And the lyrics say, Run if you are fat, crawl if you are poor. The more you work, the more you earn. Working and living is the only thing Miss Smart worries about. Such is the reality for most, if not all, working class Hong Kongers. Work late, wake up early. <laughs> Mrs. Mark saw a plastic tub because her work was her religion. Magdal is a snapshot of a city at a moment in time seen from the street level. I always find that fascinating. And if you are equally fascinated by it, maybe you too can document your small moments in life and create a blog using Squarespace. Reading someone's day-to-day -day life on a website feels so much more like a legit project than reading it on any form of social media. That is the magic of a professional website. And the website is, of course, fully customizable. Just pick a template and get started, or start from scratch if you want that DIY feel. There are so many tutorials available on Squarespace and 24-7 customer support. No matter how ambitious your plan is, Squarespace will help you achieve it. 
Start your free trial at squarespacecom cinema. Use the code Axe in the Cinema, and you can get 10% off your first purchase. Maybe one day your website will be viewed just like McDowell, with nostalgia and fond memories. So why not get started today with Squarespace? Okay, so this part is a bit weird. In a travel montage through Hong Kong, we see typical sceneries found in the city: traffic jams, constructions, and、um, ads for hemorrhoid treatments. And Mrs. Mark stands in front of it too. How intriguing! In a later scene, we see McDowell's birth certificate and learn that he was born in 1995. Assuming Mrs. Mark gave birth during her early 30s, that means Mrs. Mark was a Gen X, born at the beginning of Hong Kong's economic uprising. You see, starting from the 60s, Hong Kong saw rapid urbanization and industrialization. The city's GDP grew 180 times from 1961 to 1997, and per capita also rose by 87 times. Gen X had greater access to higher education than their parents, resulting in more white-collar workers. And since most jobs in a post-industrial economy are in the service industry, a lot of Gen X ended up working a desk job. Mrs. Mark, for example, worked in real estate. Since working overtime was extremely common at the time, these workers would sit in an office day in and day out, resulting in rampant hemorrhoids. That's it. That's the joke. In the second half of the film, there is a story about how Hong Kong windsurfer Lei Lei San won the first Olympic medal for the city. Inspired by her, McDowell decided to become an Olympic athlete too. The city grew more passionate about sports, culminating in Hong Kong's attempt at hosting the 2006 Asian Games and losing the bid. This I still remember vividly. Indeed, the story of Lei Lai San and the bid for Asian Games are both real events. Post 1997, Hong Kong was losing relevancy on the international stage. Throughout the 90s, China was getting richer day by day, and so was many surrounding countries. Hong Kong was no longer looked on with envy. People watch movies made in Hollywood, listens to music from Taiwan and South Korea. Kids play games and watch anime from Japan. It was as if every form of cultural export from Hong Kong all died at once. What if we are not destined for great things? That was a question buried in the collective subconscious. I remember the bid for the Asian Games being a big deal. Big enough that I still remember the slogan. It was on the news constantly, and the mascot was everywhere. It was like one last attempt to put Hong Kong back in the limelight. So when Hong Kong lose the vote to Doha, a city that, as the movie says, most Hong Kongers have never heard of before, it was the final blow. The reaction was big. Songs were written about the failure, and the lyrics were not polite, railing against Hong Kong bureaucracy and governmental apathy towards day-to-day -to -day societal issues. At this point, it becomes obvious why McDowell resonated with Hong Kongers so much. Despite Mrs. Mark's wishes, McDowell turned out to be just another ordinary kid. Despite the hope of many Hong Kongers, the city didn't turn out to be special. That feeling of stuck being an ordinary person was so relatable. During the release of this film, Hong Kong was still feeling the effects of the '97 Asian financial crisis. The economy trended downward. Hong Kong entered a period of deflation. Wages grew faster than the price of products. Business saw greater expenses and lower income. To the ordinary people, it meant the unemployment rate skyrocketed. Don't you love it when the line goes up? We struggle with inflation, and the line goes down. We suffered from unemployment. Mrs. Mark, born during the economic uprising, believes that hard work leads to a better life. 从前有小朋友好勤力读书，佢长大发咗。The narrator, that is Ado McDowell, lacks such ambition. 我忽然明白，原来有啲嘢冇
就真系冇，唔得就真系唔得。麦德斯 plan for life is to finish his education and then buy a house for his mom. There is no further commentary on that. Yet somehow we all know how impossible that is. At the end of the film, Adam Macdow says he's doing so-so, and he has negative net worth, but he has a pair of muscular calves thanks to his Olympic training back in the day. He believes if his mom sees him right now, she'd be proud. Though everything throughout the film is ordinary, the only thing that isn't is the love between the two. Mrs. Mark loves Macdow as much as Hong Kongers love the city. If you have seen the film before, you may have noticed I barely scratched the surface. I don't want to spoil your experience with the film. It's not a movie for everyone. The humor can get pretty repetitive, but if you give it a chance, you may be surprised just how emotional it can get. It's so rare to see a contemplative movie like this. It's shiny like a mirror. When you look at it, it starts telling a fairy tale about you. About the dreams you once had, about the job you have, about the people you missed, about the people you love. At least that is what I got from this film. As we grow to love this ordinary piglet, we also slowly learn to love ourselves. <laughs>